Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently, what we think is likely to happen next and all that wonderful stuff. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Now if you have not yet joined us in Discord, guys, you are missing a trick. It is the first place we go to to notify you the ins and the outs of everything that is going on in the crypto space so why not check that out linked in the description down below it's completely free and i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there now in this video i am going to be applying elliott wave theory it can be somewhat complex at times um i have actually created a video course also linked in the description below at the cheeky school.com that explains elliott wave theory in a 21 part video um yeah i guess tutorial i guess is, is probably a good way of looking at it and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the psychology of of Elliott Wave Theory, how to apply it, how to trade it and all that kind of stuff. Why not check out Cheeky School as well? Let's make a start though. Uh, Bitcoin paired up with USDT here on the hourly chart and Binance is our data source. Now there's a few different lines going on here. Um, in a nutshell though, we have been trading sideways. We did see on Christmas a little bit of a scam wick to the downside before pushing the price up higher. We can of course articulate this as a three wave structural move to the upside looking like it has completed. So let's go focus in on that to start with. Let's come down here. Okay. <clears throat> Now from here we have this high and we have this low. This is the wicking question, right? We pushed down, we pushed up, we then liquidated both longs and shorts and then we pushed up a little bit higher. And if we move this over to our bounce just here, we can see that we come up to the 88.2% retracement just short of that one to one. And we have of course broken down. Now we have not pierced this low down here. So I can go ahead and just put a horizontal line right there at $16,791 to the penny now there of course we can acknowledge that we we haven't broken this low so we could still th think of this as a potential three wave structure within our c wave and still come up here one of the things that we've got to consider uh, ultimately when it comes to elliott wave theory and where we are in this particular market is that we are just trading sideways here right so we have a lot of these kind of structures and you know our c wave here could have been met right here the minimum expectation would be a double top with this one and we are just uh, peaking ever so slightly above that you can see the wick right there now, as we are trading sideways and we're in this ranging market and have been for quite some time here, you can see how important it is to kind of reflect on our supply areas and, of course, our demand areas. So right now we're in this little supply area. OK, we have peaked just above it here. This does break this a little bit. OK, and we can, of course, you know, think about maybe moving this up and making it a bit wider if we want to. I don't really want to do that so much. I'm happy to kind of mark one as complete and ended and then move on to the other one. The other area of interest is this area here. We spoke about this briefly yesterday uh, essentially this is a previous area where there was demand and so the price came down and it moved out of this area it came down it moved out of this area it came down we broke it we rounded through it we came back down one more time and then confirmed that this is an area of buying pressure and then the price pushed up now since we've lost this area over here on the 16th of december we haven't really retested it so this could be an interesting zone to be testing this is basically between 17,080 and 17,126 which is quite a lot of coincidence guys if we actually measure the distance on our a wave here move this over to our low point just over here that our one-to-one -one ratio comes up actually at 17,378 but our 618 comes right in up here on this area can you can see that right there basically meaning that we could potentially start seeing a move and a double top right up inside this area just above that seventeen thousand dollar level hit seventeen thousand and then we could quite easily move on down now the higher supply range at seventeen thousand three hundred this red line here particularly seventeen thousand three sixty is the peak with this particular candle over here this is actually where we should coincide with our one-to-one -one ratio on this c wave getting up there though it does look to be a little bit troublesome we've got a long journey to kind of go through here to try to get up and push our way up there if i actually throw on i think this one uh yeah this is our 200 ema if i just check it to make sure yeah length is 200 right so this is our, our area of resistance right on this kind of scale you can see here that we're being kept well below our 200 ema on our hourly chart so when we start thinking about this opportunity to push up into this higher supply range um between 17,002 and 17,004 it's getting quite difficult to see how the price of bitcoin is going to rally up that high now we are nice and low on our hourly chart so i am expecting a move to the upside now if i come over to the four hourly chart 
you can see how we have progression to the downside on the stochastic. And if I actually focus in on this just a second here, you can see our 200 EMA on our four hour chart is actually just below our area here of 17,080 and 17,126. So essentially, you know, we are up against it, right? Are we likely to see that higher range? Um, I'm not so sure. I think we've got some movement to uh, on the smaller time frame, but the larger time frame at the moment, it isn't looking too encouraging. The same with our eight hour chart here. You can see how that 200 EMA is much, much higher on our eight hour chart. We are, of course, looking at this potential move up a little bit higher, but we are overbought and we have been for quite some time. On our 12 hour chart, also overbought and that EMA is way up there. On the 16 hours, again, EMA is nice and high. Um, and, you know, we're really struggling. We are overbought. We are likely to see some kind of rejection from here. This is not going to end well, I don't think, for Bitcoin. Now, up here, again, on the 20-hour chart, EMA is high. And again, overbought on our stochastic RSI. So if we were to kind of reflect on this, right, what are we seeing? Well, um, if I actually come to the daily to start with, here we have the higher highs and the higher lows getting set. These often and more often than not end up with breaks breaking down. We are low on our daily chart, but we can, of course, come back down. We don't have to go up higher. But, you know, if we do, there's still that potential to push it right back up into the $17,000 range. I just can't see it on the other time frames. I think, if anything, we're going to start to see a bit of a break to the downside here. Now, one of the things I think is quite important to kind of reflect on is where is that EMA right up there? Okay, you can see the daily 200 EMA is really, really high. Now, it's probably not so important here. Let me actually come down into our 12 hour. It's probably easier to articulate everything here on our 12 hour chart essentially we are if i grab hold of my um trend line here i'm going to draw a little trend line in on the price action just there okay you can kind of see that that coming in right we have the high up here on the 14th of december and we have this low down here on the 27th of december okay and we can see that the stochastic rsi is high okay so if i draw a trend line on here we can see and we can articulate it's, it's actually really minor. Over this end, we're uh, actually 100 and up here, we're at 100. Yeah, so it kind of reaches that kind of top level there. Essentially, this would look like a um, divergence, okay? Price is unable to push up higher, yet we've come right back up into the same overbought area we were when price was high. So this kind of divergence also indicates that we are looking quite bearish here for Bitcoin. So hard to be optimistic at times. Um, if I pull this back up here for a second, you can kind of see that, yes, there might be some small uh, hourly kind of movements to the upside here. And if we're lucky, we're able to push up into that $17,000 level. I would still would personally like to see $17,200. I just don't think we're going to at this point. I think actually with the amount of time that's progressed here, uh, all we're going to do is get to a point where this market just basically comes crumbling down and uh, starts tumbling down towards our lows, which are around $13,200 and $14,000. So across those different timeframes, I think, yeah, there's definitely a lot to kind of be thinking about. On our uh, Bitstamp data here with the USD, we can, of course, articulate that we have turned a previous area of support into resistance at this point. And the next real kind of pit stops are really 19, uh, 13,900 and 11,500 right down here. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see how that kind of uh, moves further forward. Now, as we kind of think about wallets, who's buying and who's selling, again, this time we've got three different retail investors. We've got the 0 0.1 Bitcoiners, we've got the 1 Bitcoiners and the 10 Bitcoiners. All of these I consider retail investors and all acting very similarly, over emotional, buying the dip, um, hodling onto their BTC. Yet when we actually take a look at the larger whales uh, or larger players, other than the sharks, which are the normally the active kind of traders in the market, um, they've been kind of coming out. They're not really terribly doing too much here staying out and staying um, pretty cool during these moments of volatility. So until those retail investors are going to sell their Bitcoin to the larger whale investors, I'm not sure we can get too carried away and too excited. If we take a look at how the whales have been in 2022, this is what it looks like. Um, from all the way up here in um, late February, beginning March, or late March when they started selling here, you can kind of start to see how they've kind of just been coming out of their positions and selling their Bitcoin to the retail investors who have been buying up every single dip every time um, one of their favorite TikTokers tells them that the bottom is in so just be a little bit cautious i don't think this is going to end well for btc and uh, bitcoin holders i do think that there is a lot further to go here and until we start seeing whales buying i can't get too carried away and too optimistic about the future of btc uh, that being said there comes an immense opportunity for those who are 
uh, or have the capability of hodling uh, and dollar cost averaging on the way down because I do think there's going to be some pretty decent discounted levels when it comes to Bitcoin if that is your bag. I'm going to leave this video right there though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Where do you think Bitcoin is heading both short term and long term and how low do you think this thing could actually go? I'm really interested to get your thoughts and opinions. If you found it useful, smash the like button. If you're new, subscribe and don't forget guys, join us down in Discord. Until the next one, have a fantastic day.